If you're watching yesterday, you'll know that we sent a wildlife camera team out to film a golden eel nest here on the Mull. Now, no sooner had they settled down that the weather broke, the wind picked up, the rain came lashing down, so they had to abandon, but they had to leave the poor exposed chick there on the nest. Now, the wind, unfortunately, was coming in from the southwest, which is the direction that nest was facing, and the poor chick really did bear the brunt of that storm. It tried to shelter, tried to get out the rain. Was it successful now? Well, we're not sure. We were doubly worried because that very same pair last year used another nest, another very exposed nest, and when some storms hit Mull at the end of May, they blew that nest off the cliff, killing that chick. So soon as the weather cleared a bit, yesterday morning we sent our wildlife cameraman Jim Manthop back in to see whether that chick was still alive or not. This is the nesting cliff, and luckily for us, when Jim zoomed in, you can see a chick squatting down there. And there he is, sat up, looking bedraggled, yes, looking wet, as is the adult, but still alive, still begging for food. And soon, the adults, they're very good hunters this bear. They brought in food, but what's interesting here, you look carefully, you'll see that there's actually a young kestrel, a kestrel nestling. And the chick decided to try and eat it whole. Just look at that. Just trying to get that down, legs dangling out. It tried and tried and tried and tried. No, I'll have another go. Let's have another go. This is a bit like me trying to eat sticky toffee pudding. That's exactly how I eat my sticky toffee pudding. It, it tried several times, in fact. I'll tell you what's interesting. Now that the adults know that there, there's a kestrel nest nearby, they'll go back and they'll target the other chicks. Now, eventually, this chick learnt its lesson and thought, actually, do you know, if I'm going to eat this, I'm going to have to rip it up into smaller chunks, which is exactly what it did. That's good manners. And eventually it ate it all. It's lovely. I can't tell you how happy we were to see that that chick has survived. Of course, it's not the first time we've ever seen golden eagles on Springwatch. Back in 2016, a very svelte, a very fit Chris Packham went up a very steep mountain with eagle guru Dave Anderson to attach a satellite tag onto the back of a young female eagle called Freya. This tag is extraordinary. It should last for the next six years. And not only will it tell us this female's location, it will also give us her altitude and her body temperature. Hopefully we'll be able to follow her up until the time she has her own chicks. What about that? That would be amazing. Our mission to fit a satellite tag to the chick has been successful. Today, this eagle has become our eagle. How fantastic is that? Well, isn't that fantastic? I was very envious of Chris there, really envious. Now, the satellite tag is still going, so we now have six years of information. That's a lot of data for a young eagle. So where has Freya been? Well, you can see here, she traveled quite widely, mainly in that central belt. She's gone right down to uh, Dumfries and Galloway down there as well. But she hasn't wandered as far as many young eagles do. Now, that satellite tag we know is still working. And the latest news we have is that Freya last winter paired up with an adult male golden eagle with a territory. Now, this is fascinating because what that means is that Freya would have had to chase away or kill the resident female. But now she's got herself a partner. They've got themselves a, a, a nice territory, hopefully. That's where she will stay. The bad news is it's not a very good year for golden eagles in Scotland. I've spoken to quite a few people right across the country, raptor group workers who work with this species quite closely, and they all tell the same tale. Even dependable pairs that have always reared young in past years, they've either not bred, they've not laid eggs, or they've failed this year. On Mull, I spoke to Dave Sexton, the RSPB warden, the eagles are not doing well here. I spoke to a friend of mine who's monitoring eagles just south of Inverness, 16 territories in all. Now, last year, those 16 territories produced 17 young. It was a remarkable year. This year, so far, those 16 territories have got five chicks, just five chicks. So what exactly is going on? Well, 
nobody knows. I've spoken to so many people and nobody knows. And everyone's hoping it's just a blip, just one of those things that happens from time to time. And as for Freya, well, Freya did breed this year. She paired up, as I said, they laid eggs, those eggs hatched. But unfortunately, the young chick died. But that's not unusual for a, a young, immature eagle. She's only six years old. They'd only become sexually mature when they're five or six. So the hope is that she'll try again and succeed next year.